Amen. Let people go out and say amen again. Amen. We're so glad today to be here together. We're glad for the congregations that are gathered here together. We're glad for this moment in time. Uh, we'll tell you this, um, when we realized that Pastor Darrell Honor wouldn't be here today, um, uh, Emory, Pastor Emory and I flipped for who would sing and who would preach. And I guess y'all glad that I didn't win the singing portion of the contest. And so y'all got to get stuck with me here with the sermon part. But y'all would have been worse off if I had to sing some songs. So let's give God praise today. I'm not going to hold you long, but I'm so glad to, to be here to celebrate with the deacon and deacon at the St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, you all know um, wonderfully well with the members of St. Peter that this is a wonderful group of men and women who seek diligently to do the work of the Lord. Uh, each of them have impacted me in a special and different way. Uh, if I had more time, I could tell you what I love about each of them, but let me just rest you assured that I love something different about each of the deacon and deaconess at St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, they not only are, are, are caring and kind, but each of them in their own way uh, have given examples not only to myself but this congregation of different elements of being a successful, victorious Christian. And so we're grateful. I'm grateful. St. Peter's grateful for each of you. And if y'all would join me, let's give God praise for the deacon deacon that's one more time. One more time. Amen. Now if you got some Bibles, we're going to plunge right in here and get started. And we're going to try not to hold you long. First Baptist Church of Gresham, we're grateful for your presence, your brother and sisterhood with St. Peter Baptist Church. St. Peter, let's give God praise for First Baptist Church of Gresham Road. For their partnership with us. I know last week we were with them and this week they were here early. Mighty early. Getting us getting ready. We I had to hustle across the parking lot when I saw the gold ties. I said, Well, I gotta get there first. If you have your Bibles, join me in the book of Hebrews. Just a couple of verses today. In the book of Hebrews. Say amen when you're there. Just in case somebody phoned, died, the Falcons did win. Somebody said hallelujah. I was trying to find out if the Bears blew another, blew it again, but I couldn't pull them up on, on my phone. So we were, somebody had to watch sports in the later. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. I'm just going to read one verse. Chapter 11. Say amen when you're there. One verse, verse six. The Bible says these words, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. If you turn to your name and say neighbor. In this case, I'm looking for my reward. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Of all the things that affect deacon and deaconess, Christians and people of God can aspire to and desire of their lives, there's nothing greater than effective faith. We want to experience the grace of God. We want to experience the mercy of God. We want to have the joy of the Lord. We want to have that peace that surpasses all understanding. We want all of these things to be a part of our Christian walks. We want to be faith. We want to be long suffering. We want to be patient. We want to forbear one another in love. We want to be meek. We want all of these things. But the thing that takes us the farthest and strengthens us the most is having faith in God. Uh, as we look at this letter, this epistle, Hebrews, uh, we begin to look and evaluate it from its very beginning. The, the author of Hebrews was trying to put some things together for the Christian then and the Christian now. Uh, he wanted the Christian then and the Christian now to understand, first and foremost, the superiority of a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. We remember that the author of Hebrews is writing to those Christians that uh, had in their background a Hebrew past. They were, they were Jews and many of them during the time of trouble and tribulation thought about going back to their old way of life. They thought 
about giving up their, their relationship with the Lord and going back to what they were most familiar with. Going back to the, the worship of the temple and the ritual as opposed to the relationship that they had with God through Christ Jesus. And so the other people who sought to show very clearly uh, that it was much more superior to have a relationship with God than anybody else. What he did was he tried to show, first of all, that, that, that Jesus was superior to all of the prophets. And then he moved on and said, Jesus is superior to all of the angels. Jesus is superior because he is, in fact, the son, the very image of God. And as he established this, he moved on around right about chapter 10 and began to talk about some of the things that you know, men and women of God wouldn't do. And he reminded them that you have gone through some stuff. You've had to deal with some stuff. Men and women, he was talking to them and said, Men, y'all have lost family members and friends because you simply chose to have faith in God through Jesus Christ. And at the end of chapter 10, what he began to express to them was now is not the time to turn around. Now is not the time to turn back. Now is not the time to give up. But now is the time to press on to that place where God wants you to be. And let me take a station break and let every, every child of God know now is not the time to back up. Now is not the time to quit doing what you're doing. Obstacles may be in your way. Trials may come your way. Situations may arise. Sickness may happen. Stuff may come up. But now is not the time to back up. Now is the time to press on. Governments may look crazy. The economy may look weird, but now is the time to press ahead. Now is not the time to say, let me do what I used to do, but now is the time to say, let me do more of what God wants me to do. And I challenge the men and women of St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church and Christians all over this building to understand that reality. Now is the time to press. Somebody tell you, they we got to press. He says, now, don't, don't draw back. Don't pull back. Don't pull back from what you've been doing. Don't pull back from the study of the word. Don't pull back from your service. Don't pull back from reading the word of God. Don't pull back from your praise. Don't pull back from your worship. But you have to who believe. Somebody say you got to believe. He said, we are not, verse 39 of chapter 10 says, we are not of them who draw back to, to being lost and destroyed, but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, our salvation comes by belief and faith in God, and we got to keep on riding that same train. Now, if you move to chapter 11, I want to give the context, because in chapter 11, I want you to be clear, he didn't just start talking about faith out of nowhere. He had set us up about faith in chapter 10. He gave us a setup. He gave us, he played volleyball. He set him up for a, 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 a spike of faith. If we were playing basketball, it would be the alley oop to get ready to hold on to faith. What he lets us know in chapter 10 is that we, as a people of God, are not delivered by our intellectual capacity, but we're delivered by faith in God. So in chapter 11, here's what he says. He says, now faith is. And, and, and I've read this, and most of us have read this hundreds of times. What this, this, this moment in time, now faith is, is a very powerful statement. It makes us something we can hold on to. But it's not just a definition, and it's also not just a description. It is a, a blueprint, a roadmap for us to understand how God is speaking to us and how God wants us to react to what he's doing. Look what it says. Faith is. Faith is. Somebody say it is. It's not what it was, it's what it is, what it is. Faith is, faith is. In other words, in that time and in this time, faith is. Faith is the same now as it used to be. Why? Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what it takes to connect with him always was, but always will be. What God is measuring, what God desires from us now, the same thing he desired of those in the past. And what is that? Faith. Faith is, it is, it is how we get Faith is the substance of things hopeful. It's what, what he wants us to understand. Christians, he wants us to understand. Faith is a rhythm. That when we walk out of the world and the darkness of our old ways of life, and we walk into some church, some sanctuary, some tabernacle, and enter into a relationship with God, that first move was a move of faith. And, and, and it's a river. We get on that river. Faith in that river takes us all the way into eternity. But what he wants us to say is faith is a substance. In other words, faith is the real assurance that what God says is going to come to pass. In, in other words, faith is not built on what you think, what you can understand. Can I tell somebody, has anybody been in church long enough that God has told you to do something you didn't understand but you just had to do it anyway? Faith, faith, faith is, is something that is not based upon what somebody can explain to you. It's just based on what you believe that God said. In other words, if God said it, faith calls you to hold on to it no matter whether or not you understand it or not. 
Faith is the substance of things. Often we believe in such a way. It, it, we are sure. We, we believe it even though we can't see it. We believe it even though we can't understand it. We believe it because God said it. In other words, I heard somebody say before, God says it. I believe it. That settles it. And I want to move out that middle turn. If God says it, guess what? That settles it. If God said it, it, it settles. When God said, let there be light, the, 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 the sun didn't make a decision. The sun did what? Start shining. Why? Because God Evidence. This, this is a, this this verse one is poetic, uh, and in the Greek, it's just this that the author's effort to make a point by using two parallel themes. He says, "Faith is some things hoped for, the evidence seen not seen." It's the same thing, but he said it to reiterate the importance of faith. In other words, for the child of God, faith is not something we can have. Faith is something we got to have. Well, let's talk about it for a moment. Um, off of Hebrews, can we have a conversation? Tell me a little bit more about faith. We got it. Faith is me being able to believe anything that God says. Faith is me being able to receive and walk in it because God said it. But tell me, has anybody else walked in faith? Yeah, here's what Off of Hebrews says. He says. Let me talk to you for a minute. He says, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. He lets us know that the elders, the folk who we hear about, that he's going to outline a little further down, the folk that are heroes of faith, folk names we call right now. What faith did for them was allow them to be pleasing to God. To be pleasing to God. In other words, it, it, it's not just that Moses did so much. What started Moses doing, what Moses did was by faith. I'm talking to David. David, well, David, well, David, I know you slayed Goliath. David, I know you won many victories. What got you on the path of being a victorious king? He wouldn't say it was his education. He wouldn't say it was his background. He wouldn't say it was his family lineage. He would say, I had faith in God. Oh yeah, I believe they would say that. I believe they would say, look here, when I was on out there by myself, it was God who protected me and more and more I saw what God can do is the more and more I held on to God's unchanging hand and all it did was build up my faith. And as a result, when we hear about David, we don't talk about his failures, we talk about his faith. I want to tell somebody, if you got faith in God, it'll overcome your faults. If you got old faith in God, it'll overcome your shortcomings. If you got faith in God, that means you trust God. When you mess up in God, can pull you out of your mess up if you have what? Faith in Him. Wish I had somebody could testify on that one. But many of us have messed up. But because we didn't back up, we just kept on having faith. God pulled us through our stuff. He says, by faith in the elders, obtain the good report. In other words, God put a divine you turn a letter in their file because of faith. Then that was what it did. It wasn't, wasn't what they did because what they did came because they had what? Faith. It, it wasn't what they said because whatever they said came by faith. It wasn't what the prophet Isaiah said. It was just the prophet Isaiah had faith enough to say what God said no matter what anybody else said. What, what else does faith do? Off of Hebrews. Well, look at verse 3. He says, not only this by, was it by faith that the elders obtained a good report. He did, but it's through faith. In other words, faith is the, is the operation of this, oper this what he's about to describe. He says, we understand the words which were framed by the word of God. So the things which are not, were not made of things which do appear. Let me talk about this from verse 3. It is faith that allows us to understand. Somebody talks about science. There's a movie, there's a TV show come on called The Big Bang Theory. And, 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 and some of y'all may have seen The Big Bang Theory is a, is a show about some scientists, some young scientists, and they attempt through their experience and their projects when they're not laughing and joking to prove certain things about the atmosphere, certain things about the, 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 the planets and the worlds and even the, the, the geology of, of the, the, how the world came about and what makes up the world and, and all these things. They use science and when they can't explain it one way, they go and try to pick, uh, figure out another way. But I told somebody one night, I love that show, but one thing I understand is nobody's mind is great enough to understand how God did what he did. How do we understand what God did? How do we know why the sun comes up and down that we don't know but, but by faith we understand it's going to happen how, how, many of us, how many of us wake up in the morning and we know that, that no matter what the sun's going to come up 
How many of you right there? And it's gonna it's gonna move all day long. We 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 know all day long the sun is set on an ellipse. It's gonna go one way and go another way. We know at night the sun that the moon's gonna show up. We know where where it goes all day. I don't know, but what I do know is at night because God put it up there. It's going to show up. It might be a whole moon. It might be a half moon. It might be a wavy crescent. It might be a waxy crescent or whatever it's going to be. Guess what? God is in control. Of it. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, well, what about the hurricane, Pastor? Which way is it going to go? I said, I don't know what way the hurricane is going to go. I said, and neither do the folk who are watching the hurricane want somebody to know which way it's going to go. And that's God because he controls every drop of rain. He controls every wind from the east, west, north, and south. We have faith, and by faith we understand that everything that is was made by God. Made by things is the stuff that we didn't see. Make up what we see right now. Well, let me go just a little further. Let's talk about one more element of faith. Faith causes us to, to get good reports. Faith causes us to be able to understand what we cannot explain in ourselves. But then faith causes us, it ought to cause us, and this is what I want to focus on for the Christian today. It ought to cause us to do more than we do. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. By faith, eight. Oh, unto God a more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain. And by that sacrifice, Abel obtained a witness that he was righteous. In other words, his title became that not only of the brother of Cain and the son of Adam and Eve, but he became known as righteous because of his sacrifice. Why did Abel offer a better sacrifice to Cain? The Bible says it was because of Abel's faith. Now I want to break that down just a little more. Abel, Abel, Abel and his brother both had stuff. They weren't fighting over land. They weren't fighting over uh, cattle. They didn't have nobody to fight with. But one of them did more than the other. Why? Because he had faith. Somehow another God had supernaturally infused uh, Abel to understand that even though he couldn't see the plan of God, that he said, I believe God is and I know way off in the future God is going to do something great. And because I believe it, I don't know what he's going to do. He didn't have the history, the, 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 the benefit of history. All he did have was something on the inside that caused him to do more than his brother. He wasn't competing with his brother. He was simply trying to please God because God had put something in him. Can I stop by St. Peter? What man tell you? You ought to do what you do because you have something in you that moves you to give God your very best. You ought not do what you do because what somebody else is doing. You ought to do it because God is moving on the inside of you and you might not know what the end is going to be but you know there's something at the end waiting. It ought to make us do more. If you're just doing what you do to outdo somebody else, you're going to run into a wall after a while. If you're doing what you're doing because you want somebody to pat you on the back, you're going to run into a wall after a while. If you're doing what you do because you want the limelight, you're going to run into a wall when somebody else steal your shine. But if you're doing what you do for the Lord, you are going to give your very best time won't matter. Your money won't matter. Your talent won't matter. You just say, Lord, I'm giving you all that I have. And here's what I like about this. It says, it, 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 even in his death, Abel still spoke. Why? Because of his faith in God. Last point. I'm going to let y'all go. Just verse 5. Here's what it says. Not only does faith give us an opportunity to get a good report. Not only does faith in God believe trusting, understanding and holding on to what God says no matter what because just because God said it allow us to have understanding of things that would not be explainable otherwise not only does faith allow us to do more than we do and give our best to the Lord but faith allows us to move from one place in God to another place in God look at verse 5, let's break this down, we're about finished by faith, Enoch. Y'all remember Enoch? The Bible says Enoch lived. And he kept on living. And did not die. But instead was moved into the presence of God. Why? Because of 
faith. Okay, let's dig a little deeper. Look at verse 5 again. By faith, Enoch was translated. In other words, he ceased to be in one place, but he picked up in another place. And, and I want you to picture right here. Enoch was just walking. And his faith allowed him to be so fixated and focused on God that when God decided the end of his life was there, God didn't allow him to go through the process of physical degradation. Instead, God moved him from one place to another. In science, they might call it teletransporting, but I just believe that God moved him from earth into the very presence of the Lord. Why? Because he had faith. His faith allowed him to get on a highway that nobody else ever been on. His faith allowed him to get in a lane that nobody else had traveled in. His faith allowed him to go a speed that nobody else had gone. And he moved from where he was into the presence of the Lord. Folks were looking for Enoch. They were trying to find out where Enoch was. But Enoch had been moved by the divine hand of God from nowhere to somewhere. He had been moved from the divine hand of God from the dark into the light. He had been moved from a place of darkness and death to a place of eternal life. Why? Because he had faith. Let me back it up for a moment. Some of us are stuck in a place right now. But God wants to move you in your life. And I talked to a lady after church today, the young lady joined the church today. She said, Pastor, I want to move to another place. I said, you mean another house? She said, no, I want to move to another place right now. She said, look like I've got my back against the wall. My, my son is doing this and my nephew is doing that. I want to be in another place. And she said, I believe I can only get there with God. I had this, I shook a little bit. I said, that's the only way that you can be moved. There are folk out there right now who are stuck in the same place. Because they want to get where they want to get by themselves. But you can't be transformed and translated and moved from one place to another by yourself. You can only be moved by the power of God. Amen. The Bible says that he was translated, couldn't find him. God had moved him. And his testimony was that he did what? He pleased God. Is it just the author answer the unasked question? Well, of the people who's how is it that I can please God? I know many of us work jobs and we want to please our boss because we please our boss that might qualify us for a raise on our jobs. Anybody don't want to raise? Who don't want to raise? You want to please those that you work for. Some of us are in relationships and we want to please our husband or our wives. Children want to please their parents. Not, not that the parents don't give them anything, but they want to please their parents so that their parents can be happy with their children. Even as you get grown, you still want to do something to put a smile on your parents' face. Even when you're older, you want to, uh, as, a, as a spouse, you might be mad 40 years, you still want to do something to put a smile on your spouse's face. It's not sometimes because you want to raise you just want to do something so that somebody can be aware of what you're doing. Well, tell you, there's one thing to please folk. No matter how much you love folk, pleasing folk ain't always easy. I got, I got any witnesses here. Pleasing folk ain't always easy. Sometimes you do one thing and that one thing ain't enough. Sometimes you do two things and that two things ain't enough. And, and pretty soon you might go to them and say, well tell me what you want me to do and they give you a list but then when you do everything on the list you will come back and they say well I forgot about this one right here uh, I get this right here I shot try this right here and you do that and they got one more thing they put up please and folk ain't easy but the Bible says there's one thing that allows us to please God can I tell somebody it ain't how many days a week you come by the church but, or, or it's not God is not he's doing a roll call but he's not managing you upon your attendance in the building it ain't how much money you give God has everything he don't need what we got he just wants us to give it to show us how much we trust him it ain't about your bank account God it's not about our intellectual capacity what pleases God is how much we really have faith in him when the doctor he said he can have done all he can do. Can you look the doctor dead in the eye and say, I'm not worried about nothing. I just know that I know that I know that God don't work it out. When you, when you got a trouble in your way and you can't figure out a way around it, you step 
back and say, I know my God has all power and going to do what needs to be done. The Bible says, with our faith, it is impossible to please God. You can have money, won't please God. You can have a big house, it won't please God. You can have a fancy car, but it won't please God. But if you have faith in God, God will smile on you. The Bible says we got to come to God correct. That's what verse 6 says, I'm paraphrasing. It says we have to come to God and we must first of all believe that He is God. Let me add to it. We got to believe that He is God and He's a God all by Himself. In other words, don't you say I need God but I need brother so and so. If you need God, you ought to know that's all that you need. And if you believe that God is, you're on your way. But when you're on your way, you still got a little bit more to go. The Bible says that we must believe that God is. And that he is a reward. Can I talk about rewards? God's got a reward for you. He's got a reward for every single one of us. As we run this race, as we run this old race, as we run this race, as we run this journey, God is standing at the finish line. When I was a little boy, we used to run you for every telephone pole, the telephone pole. Now nobody ever measured how far it was, but whatever it was, we run from telephone pole to telephone pole. And there was always somebody standing at a telephone pole with their hands out. And so when we got there, whoever slapped the hand first won. And it got to the point where you weren't worried about the telephone pole or how far. You just wanted to slap hands with the man who was standing at the telephone pole first. You gave your very best. You sought. You dug deep within yourself to get to the man that had his hands out. Well, for a long time, some of y'all remember this, I was kind of short. And I was pretty chunky. And I never hit the man's hands first. But that was one year, 1982, that the baby fat came off. One year, well, on, in my neighborhood, I was the fastest one running down that street. And I would never forget how good it felt when I slapped that hand for the first time and nobody else got there first. And I celebrated the rest of my life in that one race I won. When I stopped by here to tell you, we got one race to run. And I'm looking forward to slapping the hand of the Lord and say, I made it over. I might not win another race down here, but when I get to heaven, I'm going to slap God's hand because I'm going to trust that he is and I'm going to trust that he has a reward for me. He might give me a hug. He might pat me on the back. But I'm waiting to him say, serve the God. Well done. You fought a good fight. You ran a good race. You preached my word. You were faithful in season. You were faithful out of season. You never quit. Come on up a little bit higher. All we need is faith. If you don't have a suit on, just have faith. If you don't have a pretty dress, just have faith. If you don't have a fancy hat, just have faith. And God will. God will. God will reward you just for your faith. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? After why? After why? When we finished our journey, God has a reward. We know you and you and you and all of us as we have faith in God. Have faith when it's going good. Have faith when it's going bad. Have faith when the sun is out. Have faith when the storms of life are going. Have faith when you got friends. Have faith when friends are few. Have faith when money's in your pocket. Have faith when your pockets are empty. Have faith when you're feeling good. Have faith when you got a hunger in your back. Have faith in God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? I'm looking for my rewards. I'm going to press on. I'm going to pray on by faith. I'm going to sing on by faith. I'm going to praise on by faith. I'm going to 
worship on by faith. And one of these days, and it won't be very long, we're going to come across the finish line and get our reward. Let's give God some praise today. I challenge Deacon Deacon that's by faith. Gonna be some stuff that people say can't be done, but by faith we can see over the mountain. By faith we can see through the darkness. By faith we get the reward that God has for us. Let us move on by faith. Father God, in the name that is above every name, in the only name by which we may be saved, we come today, Lord, to say thank you. For this sacred moment in time that you've allowed these men these women who have committed themselves fully to you we pray god that this will be a moment that they are sanctified and strengthened they're allowed to see lord deeper into the future than they've seen before not just about their individual lives but in their spiritual lives as it relates to this body, believers know the same thing. We pray, God, that on one accord, by faith, we'll be able to work together in ways that we never even imagined, by faith. That we'll be able to understand stuff that we wouldn't understand otherwise, by faith. We'll be able to please you, oh Lord. Let it be done. Let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise today. Let's give God some praise today.